Hey folks, welcome back to the channel. I'm David Bird with Reality Reimagined. I'm an award-winning photographer and Photoshop artist that specializes in fantasy composite art. And today we're going to talk about color calibrating my computer monitor. I'm gonna talk about why I do it, how I do it. We're gonna talk about why we see images on our computer monitor and that it looks different elsewhere. As a matter of fact, Let's begin the tutorial today with that question. When we see an image on our computer monitor and then we see it on a laptop or a phone or a tablet, why does it look different? Well, the answer to that is relatively simple, but it can get just a little bit complex. The simple answer is, it's a different device. So it depends upon the technology of it, how old it is, what type of display it is, its resolution. If you're looking at an image on a tablet or a phone, it can depend upon the battery power and what's left and available. If there's an option in that device that's set to sense the ambient light in the room. So if you're in a bright room, it will lower the brightness of your display to compensate and ultimately save you some battery life. It can also depend on whether or not that device has a built-in profile inside of it. And that profile is key. So whether it's a, a laptop or a phone or a television, there are profiles built in, things like movie mode or video game mode or standard. And this is ultimately how the display changes, showing you red, green, and blue, the contrast and the luminosity values in the display itself. So for movie mode, you can see a little bit more blue and orange. For video game mode, everything is saturated with a lot of contrast. And in standard, it tries to hit just an even balance between all of that. So when we work on our computer monitor, there may be one profile that we're looking at our artwork in, and then we see it in something else, and that's a completely different profile. The battery might be half dead. We might have an older device like a an LCD versus an LED or an OLED display. Just all those factors come into play. Now, this is different than talking about the color profile that's built into your file of your artwork. And I've talked about that in a previous video here on the channel. So if you're new to the channel, welcome. Take a look at the card above and it will take you to the specific video where I talk about how I save my artwork to upload it to social media. Because when I work on my artwork in Photoshop, I'm using the Adobe RGB 1990, 1998 space or profile. But when I save it, I save it to sRGB because everything on the internet is a color profile of sRGB. It's a much more limited view of color and access of color in sRGB. And that's why everything on the internet is in that color profile because it needs the consistency of being able to show images across the entire world, across all platforms. So it has to limit how much color is available. So look at that video. It will explain in depth how that works. But let's talk about now why I color calibrate my monitor. And then we'll talk about how I actually do it and do a demo of the calibration process. Why do I calibrate? <clears throat> Well, when I set up my computer monitor for the first time, I have a 32 inch curved monitor. It's a 4K monitor. It's lovely. It's wonderful. When I set it up, it has those built in profiles and it was on standard and standard is just going to do an even balance mix between red, green and blue and the luminosity values it's going to show to me. Now I have different controls on the monitor where I can adjust the contrast and the brightness and all those profiles and all that fun stuff. And depending upon the advanced how expensive your monitor is you may not have that many controls if you have a very expensive monitor like an IPS monitor then you should have those controls why do I need to calibrate this monitor can't I just set the settings to what I think looks good and then go from there well I could but there's a couple of things to consider that could cause issues number one how do I know what I'm looking at is quote-unquote good I may want to see a pretty screen. So I increase the contrast and the vibrance and I my favorite color is blue, so I'm a little biased to that. So I make everything appear more cool than it should be. And then my artwork looks great and then you all look at it on a standard profile or something else and it looks vastly different, it looks horrible. That's the reason we calibrate. Number two, and probably I'm gonna say the most important reason as to why you calibrate is because your computer monitor is showing you all of that information based upon a predetermined profile. But that predetermined profile cannot take into account the ambient light in the room itself. So editors often will edit in a dark room where there's not a lot of light so that they are not 
having any type of light contamination. Now, as computer monitors have gotten better, as we've went away from CRT monitors that had a glass into it, now it's plastic and so forth, so we don't get light refraction off of the monitor itself, all these profiles, tech has gotten better, that's not necessarily needed. So as you look at my office right now, it's, it's white walls, yes, there's stuff behind me, but I don't paint the walls anything else, I always leave them white because I don't want the ambient light in the room to affect and bounce off the colors of the walls and potentially affect how I see the computer screen and the colors that I see in the computer screen. So I calibrate my computer monitor and I refresh it about every 30 to 45 days because I need to make sure that that profile that's built into it, I'm seeing accurate colors, accurate contrast and light, especially based upon the ambient light in this office. Now, a couple of best practices. When I calibrate, I try to calibrate in the middle of the day, every single time I do it. When the sun is directly overhead, so there's no omnidirectional light coming into the windows that could affect everything. I also try to calibrate on a sunny day. I live in Phoenix, Arizona, and more often than not, it's typically very bright here. And so I don't want to calibrate my monitor on a partly cloudy day or a full cloudy day because the ambient light is significantly different. And when I calibrate, I want it to sense the ambient light in the room. So right now, as you can see behind me, I have two lamps turned on and in those lamps are daylight balanced LED bulbs. I also have an LED panel right in front of me that's illuminating my beautiful face for you all. And that's a daylight balanced LED panel. So when it's time to calibrate into the demo, I will have to turn all of those off because typically when I'm in this office editing, I have those lights off. I leave them on for you all so you can see Vader and all the cool stuff behind me. So calibrating gives you an accurate representation of what you should be seeing out of your monitor and the most even balance of red, green, and blue, luminosity values, contrast, and so forth, taking into account the ambient light in the space. Now, I have used for a number of years the i1 display profile pro display i don't know the proper title it's i1 display is what's on this little unit and it comes from a company called x right and in the description below will be a link to their website and if i can find you a link to this specific unit then i will but i've had this for a number of years this is the device that does all of the calibration it has to sit right in front of your monitor and it has to maintain contact to the monitor on all sides it can't tilt upward and have a little bit of an angle or separation it's got to be flat against it so it can see all of the light and all of the information from the monitor and take into account all the ambient light in the space. So to be able to make sure that it balances on the monitor and sits perfectly flat against it, there's a counterweight that is attached to the cord that can be slid up and down the cord. So essentially you drape this over your monitor right in front, you want it right in the center of the monitor, and then you just put this counterweight on the other side and then push it up and down the cord until everything is balanced and it works. You download the software from the website. The i1 display, at least mine, came with a CD that has the software, but my desktop doesn't actually have a CD-ROM or DVD-ROM in it anymore. I haven't had one for years, which is entirely weird to me because I, to me, CD-ROMs, um, disk drives were ultimately the gateway on how software got into your computer before the information superhighway came into existence. Yes, I'm dating myself. I remember five and a half inch disks. I played Oregon Trail on an Apple IIe. If you're a millennial and you don't want what I'm saying to you, then look it up on Wikipedia and learn something you noob. So you can go to the website on x -Rite's website and download all the current drivers and everything that you need. There's different displays that you can get and the software will accommodate for things like calibrating computer monitors. You can calibrate laptops, um, projectors and so forth, all kinds of different devices that you can calibrate. And it's key to do that because again, you want to see that balance of how everything works. So let's dive into the i1 profiler and begin the demo today of calibrating my monitor. It's actually been 52 days since I did it. I was a little lazy over the holidays. What can I say? So it's about time that I calibrate the monitor. So let's dive in and take a look and go through the calibration process today. 
So we are in the i1 profile software. The calibrator has been connected to my computer. The software is up to date. The calibrator has been recognized and we're ready to go to begin the calibration process. Now I do want to point out that with my version of this calibrator and the software, I have the ability to be able to calibrate a computer monitor, a laptop screen, and also a projector. But there is an option with this calibrator to be able to calibrate printers and scanners. I do not have the actual calibrator for that or the software. It's itself. When we go through this process of creating this calibration, it's going to create a file called an ICC profile, or essentially a color profile. That ICC profile is going to be embed into the computer system, and the computer will then tell the monitor how to display color, light, contrast, and so forth. It is possible for that ICC profile to be pushed out to things like printers and scanners. I've never actually done that because I've never went through the steps to make sure that the color calibrations of my monitor are connected to those different devices, but that is a possibility. I've only ever calibrated my computer monitor and my laptop screens, and I've left the ICC profile embed into those computer systems. So once I see all the green check marks here, knowing that the calibrator is ready to go for these different devices, to begin the next step of the workflow, I'm gonna come up to here where it says display profiling. Now, in this next section, it's going to essentially tell me to choose your display's target white point and luminance. If you have a more modern computer monitor that's been built in the past, let's say six or seven years, the manufacturer has installed drivers into the actual monitor itself. So when it's connected to the computer, it's communicating that information to the computer and to software like this from X-Rite with the i1 profiler. So the manufacturer is essentially telling the software what the target white point should be and the luminance and showing you these options here by already selecting them and populating them in the software. But if at any point you're confused about what's going on, you can just mouse over something and in the help column on the left, it will show it to you. Now it wants me to select which monitor I want to actually calibrate. I have two monitors on my desktop. The monitor that I want to calibrate is this one. This is my 32 inch monitor that I'm looking at right now. And the way that I know that the software is gonna calibrate this is because I can actually see this software that you're seeing right now on the monitor. If I were to click this button, which represents the other monitor, it would bounce the software over to that monitor and we would no longer see it on this screen. So I'm going to leave it here. I know it's ready to go. So to move on to the next step of the workflow, I simply need to come down here and click next. Now we're ready to do the measurement. So this is the final screen. It says the calibrator is connected. Everything's good to go. Here is the most important thing that you must check and you must look for in your software if you're using a different calibrator instead of the one from x right the i1. There is something built into more modern computer monitors called automatic display control. It's software that lets software like this from x -Rite control and drive things like the RGB values in the monitor, the contrast, the brightness, and so forth. If you do not check this box and you leave it on the default, which is to adjust brightness, contrast, and RGB gains, manually then during the measurement process it's going to show you what red should look like and then you have to sit around and move the controls of red green and blue to try to match it it's utterly maddening because you can never get a pure accurate result it drives you crazy this is the way that we used to have to do this before adc was created and installed into monitors so go ahead and check this box even if you aren't sure if your monitor has ADC in it, the software is actually gonna do a check for it. And if it doesn't have it, it'll bounce you back to this and make you uh, uncheck this box. So I'm gonna check it, and when I'm ready to go, I'm just gonna simply click Start Measurement. Now when I do, it's gonna take me into the next field that we'll see here in a moment. It's making sure to tell me to put the calibrator evenly connected directly to the monitor to remove the ambient light shield so the actual sensor is touching the monitor and can begin the overall measurements. It's telling me that everything is checked and we're all good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. And when I click next, it's gonna begin the measurement process. So I'm gonna move my mouse quickly off the screen and turn off the mouse tracker when we're ready to hit next and we'll begin the entire measurement process. Now it's gonna go through by scanning all the different luminosity values, the contrast values of the monitor itself. Then it will go through the different stages of cascading red from the darkest to the brightest, green to the darkest, brightest, and blue to the darkest and brightest. And it will do all these random tests. So I'm gonna speed up this part of the video so you can see all of that instead of narrating it. Oh my gosh, it's so bright. Like, I don't know if you can see it on the YouTube video or not, but it's making the entire display so bright. I feel like 
I'm in Gotham City staring into the bat signal as somebody turns it on. This is crazy. So let's speed it up and then you'll get to see the entire process and we'll finish up this video today with some final thoughts. Now we're at the final stage of the calibration where it wants me to essentially remove the calibrator from the monitor, flip the shield over and lock it in in front of the sensor and then set the calibrator on my desk so that it can do an ambient light reading of the room. This is the final most crucial step where it's gonna read all the light in the room and then balance that out to the profile that it just created. So to be able to do that, I'm going to go ahead and hit next. And it says measurement successfully completed. Click next to continue to the next step. And this is where we're going to now move into the final stage of the workflow here, where we create the ICC profile. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay, and then come down here and hit next as it's instructed me to do. So this is where I can name my ICC profile and call it whatever I want. I choose to just leave it as it is, where it's essentially the model name of the monitor and then the month and the year that this was created. So it's uh, actually the date too. So it's showing me January 28, uh, 2021. And then I can set a profile distribution as to the system level, which is an automatic default. So it's gonna push that ICC profile into the computer system and send it across the entire system. So any peripheral that needs to draw from that ICC profile, it can do that. Then profile reminder, we can set it to be whatever we want of none to four weeks. I always put it to four weeks. So it will pop up and tell me that it's time to, to do the profile, which is what's been happening for the past couple of weeks. And I'm like, I know I want, leave me alone. I don't want to do it right now. So set it to four weeks is my recommendation. And then you'll know when to start ignoring it. And then uh, last thing, ambient light monitoring. Monitoring mode is off. You can set this so that you can permanently leave the calibrator connected to your computer. So it will always do an ambient light reading and potentially adjust some of the profile to compensate for that. I do not like doing that because I don't want to leave the uh, calibrator connected to the computer. I don't like leaving it set out. I just know to do this every four weeks and, and I'm okay with that. So I leave that set to off. Now I'm going to go ahead and click save profile down here. It will save it. Profile successfully saved. Click OK to dismiss the dialog, blah, 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 blah and uh, hit home. I'm gonna go ahead and hit okay. This is a, you know, saying that you're doing the reminder and all that kind of flows. And now we get to see the before and after to see what it looks like. So we are in the after mode right now of the profile corrections. Let's go to before. So this one is a minor change, but I can see it mainly in the contrast. If we look at the image and look at the person here, look at the overall contrast of the shadows. This is before and that's after. Everything's just being lifted just a little bit. So there was different light settings, the monitor has changed, colors have changed just a touch and so forth, but ultimately this is why you wanna calibrate because actually there's a little bit more red in this one than there is in this one. I can see it in the background. I don't know if that's coming through uh, on the video for you all or not, but there's just a change, a small change to the colors and a big change, I think, to the contrast. And that's a key thing for me and all the artwork that I do because luminosity values in Photoshop play a big role in my artwork itself. So that's color calibrating. That's the entire process. Let's have, have some final thoughts and finish up this video for today. The need to calibrate your computer monitor is very clear. And anytime you go through any kind of graphics card update for drivers, there's a potential change to how the color is interpreted with the monitor itself. So. Given that the devices are not on the cheaper side, they're, uh, most good devices are not under $100, I can understand why it may not be a tool that many people want to run to or a process they think is absolutely necessary. But the longer that you work as a photographer and as a digital photo artist, the more important it's going to become to have that consistency in the color that you see on the computer and what is printed in print to your clients and given to them. Thanks so much for watching this video. If you like the content you found in it, make sure to give the video a like and consider subscribing to the channel because new content will debut each week in photography and Photoshop education. When you subscribe, make sure to hit the bell icon to be notified of that new content when you return to the YouTubes. Thanks again and until next time, I'll see you out there in the world of Photoshop.